Oh my god. Um, when I made that last video, I wasn't actually expecting to finish anything uh, relating to it in a series. So, you can see how seeing all the comments and views and subscribers I've gotten from it is very surprising. Especially with the actual quality of the video, I, I am too embarrassed to watch it now. So I guess all I can do at this point is actually, like, do something with my channel. I know this was not worth the two-month wait, but this is all I've got right now. I'm open to suggestions. I have some of my own written down right now, but uh, I'm just gonna go with this for now. Um, <clears throat> Webcomics are a massive staple of the online art community. Even if you don't actively read them, I can guarantee you've seen pages of various webcomics floating around Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, where they were likely stolen and had the reposter's URL slapped on instead of the original artist. Anyone can make one, whether you have actual art talent or all you can draw is stick figures, whether you have a plot in mind or if you have something to say about society as a whole, maybe you just want to make something really stupid. With the easy accessibility of art programs and host sites such as DeviantArt, Tumblr, or whatever you feel like using, a lot of people have made their own webcomics at this point. But we're not talking about the good ones today. No, absolutely not. What do you think I am? Someone with class? No. Today I'll be showing you some really gone-awful preachy webcomics that I actually use as a direct example of what not to do in the one I'm working on. It's, uh, it's only about 70 pages of sketches right now and it's not even public, but maybe some- I'll- I'll get- I'll get back to that later. Whatever. What do I mean by preachy? Just trying to push their message while making the other side of the topic look like a bunch of idiots instead of actually addressing their concerns like adults. I'll make one up real fast. Hello my name is Straw. Straw man. Boy do I sure hate, insert type of person here. Whoa oh yo 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 you awful idiot, take it back. No, you suck you ugly suck boy. What are you gonna do about it? Engage you in a level headed verbal debate. Lamau, no I'm not, I'm gonna call you names, possibly kill you and humiliate you to make myself look like a saint. Fair enough, I guess I deserve this for being such a waste of oxygen. Bigot, bigot, scumbag, slave owner, bigot, not say it, bigot, bigot, scum, bigot, bigot. look how slave owner, bigot, 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 that's how I see all these comics, every single time I read them. Before I start this video, you'll notice that these are considered SJW comics by most, generally just known as LGBT or feminist-centered comics. I didn't pick these solely because they're based around these topics. I am far from both sides of the spectrum, those being social justice warriors and conservatives or whatever I'm supposed to call them, but I do have personal experience with both types of people and both sides of the argument. I myself am LGBT, mixed race, have disabilities, blub, whatever, but I will not give excuses to these comics just because they also happen to be centered around the type of person I am. They honestly happen to be the only kind of preachy webcomics I can find that aren't just literally political comments. <laughs> ben Garrison. Oh my god. <clears throat> also, don't attack any of the people featured in this video. I'm just here for entertainment value and hope to educate someone out there wanting to be a webcomics artist themselves on how not to do this kind of thing. Not that I'm a professional in any way, shape, or form. I would also like to mention that I'm not just reading out other people's thoughts on these comics. I actually read through the majority of them so I could form my own opinions unbiased. Also, I did this entire script in two days. It's 30 pages long, and I read through a good, like, half to three-fourths of all of these comics in one sitting. Actual agony out of ten, I would not recommend. Now then, with all that stupid garbage, whatever, I don't care, out of the way, let's jump right in. Assigned Mail! The first thing that comes to mind when I think of preachy webcomics is one called Assigned Mail by Sophie LaBelle. The queen of all preachy webcomics, in my humble opinion. I will not be reviewing the original pages because they seem to have been deleted. I want to say that there's about like 50 to 70 pages removed from the actual strip. There's an archive of some of the old ones, but I just really want to focus on the fact that this comic is still a dumpster fire all these years later, even without the original pages. The plot is pretty much non-existent or not strong enough that I can easily follow it. Sometimes storylines will go on for a couple pages, but be interrupted by some random one panel drawing that has nothing to do with anything. But overall, I can't say anything about the plot because there is none. I think there was something relating to the main character going to the doctor in the original cut, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Anyway. One of the main reasons why this one is so infamous is how the main character, Sophie, I mean, Steffi, 
is an 11 year old but talks like a 20 something year old while the other child characters also sound like those facebook posts moms post about the deep thing their kids said earlier which is totally true and not made it for likes at all i'll read a couple Anyway, if there's anything the broken promises of the gay and lesbian civil rights movement taught us after Stonewall, it's that now is always the best time to talk about gender issues. You know, Steffi, sometimes I just feel like you're reading my mind. <laughs> no. Haters can be so funny, though. You should read the stuff pseudo-radical feminists write about me. It's hilarious. It sounds like the last century's anti-suffrage. The thing is too small. Suffragism? I can't read that. So you were born from two daddies? That's so cool. I just love how there is a mechanism in nature that produces a succession of generations and that heterosexuality has nothing to do with it. Oh, and I think you even have a gift for the patriarchy. And here's one where she's just talking a really long time. I don't care about what that says. I'll get back to it later. And then she says, And that's why the violence towards trans people, especially TPOC, trans people of color, is structural. And then you can see the other kids saying, Smash the system and trans power. Yeah, very believable. Very believable. I, I didn't know what any of this meant when I was 11, but sure, yeah. What even is this? I know everyone who has ever reviewed this comic has said it's ridiculous, but what bothers me more is how she knows it's incredibly stupid, and has made a couple of strips discussing her thoughts on people who feel that way about her comic. Recently, she decided to stop using words like heterosexism or misogyny because some white cis dudes on her Facebook page said the young girls can't say such words. That's horrible! So what's happening on the interwebs, mom? Well, some cis bros are complaining because you don't sound like an 11 year old. What do they mean? They think I'm faking it to get access to some special restroom again? A kind of restroom for people who read too many books about gender studies? That'd be weird. Ah yes, everyone who has an issue with your webcomic's main character being incredibly unbelievable and unrelatable to absolutely everyone who's ever lived is a white cisgender heterosexual male. Guys! G guys I can't believe this whole time I thought it was a mixed race, non-binary, pansexual, dragonfly thing or whatever. Thank god I had Sophie LaBelle here to tell me I'm wrong. What a way to brush off an actual issue with your webcomic. Just blame it on a group of people you don't get along with and do nothing to change it. Wait, wait, this sounds awfully familiar. I, I wonder where I've heard this before. Hmm, hmm. I should mention that the panel directly in between these two, along with another one, kind of mentions it as well. Every time we talk, I feel like it's the same thing. I mean, suppose we'd be in a story or in a book, wouldn't that be boring? Just children discussing trans issues. I never actually thought about that. There's just so many things left to ask. I'm living a trans life and I want trans people to live their trans life. Everything a trans person does, they do it as trans. I walk as trans. I laugh as trans. I fall down the stairs as trans. Might as well talk about trans issues. I told a light bulb joke the other day. Isn't that enough? Tumblr ruined your imagination. Admit it. It's funny because so often in this webcomic she comes so close to being self-aware and then immediately makes the main character go, no, nah, no, nah, they're the ones who were wrong. <sighs> Also, that wasn't a good fourth wall break at all. What if we were in a book? A book about trans issues? Like, yeah, that must have took forever to think of. Oh, sorry if I sound so bitter. I had to read through this webcomic and I've never actually sat through more than a couple pages at once. The other primary issue people have with this one is the artwork. I don't think webcomics need to have fantastic art to be successful. Just look at Sign 9 Happiness. It's literally stick people and yet it's probably the most successful webcomic out there besides Homestuck, which is pretty unappealing to look at as well until later on when the backgrounds and flash game slash animation segments really shine through. Still don't like it though, don't crucify me. <laughs> However, this artwork is really, really not great. I can think of 500 things the characters' faces better resemble than 11 year old children and their parents. Like, uh, Megaminds? That one doll of Belle from Beauty and the Beast? The live action version? The aliens from Mars Attacks? Coneheads? Anything that's an alien and also has a big head? Uh, hydrocephalic children? Oh, ooh, no, no, no. That, <laughs> that was too far. That's kind of horrible. Don't Google it. 
From an artist's perspective, I gotta say I really hate how wobbly the lines are. It's been fixed in new comics for the most part, but for the first couple years it was around, it was really, really bad. I'm also not personally a fan of the kind of shading shown in this, where everything's shaded with gray and looks all lifeless, but I think the biggest problem would be the same face syndrome. Let's play a quick game, kids! Here's some of the webcomics characters, and here's their faces. Can you match them? Pause and memorize who goes to what body, and... You got it? Are you done? I, I don't care. You're probably wrong. The main character's design is incredibly forgettable, and I can't remember what she looks like five seconds after looking at a picture of her. I can't tell any of the characters apart and definitely can't tell what age they are, especially with the new comics. Lastly, I think the backgrounds are actually pretty okay when they're there. I can actually tell where the characters are spatially, and they aren't just standing in front of solid colors, which is more than I can say for most comic strips. Lastly, aside from the art being an issue and the fact that the main character should honestly be an adult or something to make it more believable and less embarrassing to read, the preachiness, the reason for the video, the reason I made this video, because I... I cannot stress enough, it is incredibly strong in this one, with nearly every single strip having this issue. I had to go through and save the worst ones I found, and by about page 70 or so, I had 35 saved. It was unbelievable. That is literally, actually, half of every single page I consider to be the worst. <laughs> Stop non-consensual hormonal and genital mutilations on intersex minors? You're not serious then parents and peers would have to accept those children as they are. Then the king said to Lancelot, If you can defeat the dragon, I'll give you the hand of the princess. What? You can't give away a woman like that. We're not objects. And what's the deal with female characters that are all passive and submissive? How come this is your favorite book? It's so sexist. Just read IT. Thanks for the evening. It was awesome. Why are the lights still on? Look, we're rewriting my sexist nightbook. Sorry, there was a feminist emergency. I'm so proud of her. You'll accept an extra dip, I hope. My child doesn't want you assuming anything about their identity or sexuality, sorry. First they ask for rights, soon, they'll ask for respect. TSSK. Now that's a cute dress. Thanks. People think that I'm a girl like any other. All they say is a rather stereotypical girl. Little do they know that I can shatter their success view of the world, or that I'm about to crush the gender binary. Is, is she alright? Yes. Kim hoo hoo hoo. What? What the fuck? What? I don't want to be with her. She has the genders. Sigh, we all have the genders. I'm not even sure if she's really a girl. I can't work with her. Actually, he's right. Challenging cisnormativity could be devastating for his budding and fragile hegemonic masculinity. Yeah, what she said. LGBTQIABCXYZ Hashtag dot dot Do we really need all those labels? Aren't we all human? Why do we always need to find ways to divide? Society won't accept us if we keep coming up with new identities other than mine. Even LGBT is a bit complex. We should just say G. My identity is simpler. Give yours up, please. But I was wondering, are you gonna have, like, surgery? Ugh, cis people. What do you mean, ugh, cis people? Is being cis bad? I'm not even sure what being cis means, but you shouldn't paint us all with the same brush? Wouldn't that be, like, reverse transphobia? I don't think that's how you get people's support. You see, I don't exactly want people's support. All I want is people to have basic human decency. And comparing your cis guilt to systemic violence against trans people lacks a lot of it. Got it.
I actually see a lot of people around who like this comic, and as the intended audience, I really can't understand why. If this was someone's introduction to life as a trans person, I would feel genuinely sorry for them. Also, uh, I feel weird about talking about this. This comic really focuses on talking about the genitals of children, like, a lot. I feel dirty reading it. It's like Big Mouth on Netflix. I do not want to hear this 11-year-old child talk about that. It's mostly an issue in the earlier comics, but they're not even the deleted ones, so I felt the need to include this anyway. It seems to be better nowadays, so I give her credit there, but... Whew, ugh, ugh. It's just really creepy when you remember that it's an almost 30-year-old, if not actual 30-year-old, writing these comics. Also, there's this one comic where a transphobe is shown to just secretly crush on the main character, and it's kind of awful to me. It's like how teachers and parents say, Oh, he's just picking on you because he likes you. Maybe they don't do that anymore these days, but when I was a kid, that was a very big problem. You can't look me in my stupid dragonfly face and tell me you honestly think that was the best way to handle that. I'm pretty sure the artist for this is even like a camp counselor, so that makes it kind of worse, honestly. If the comic isn't straw manning, talking about child genital, uh, uh, or being plain incorrect, it's doing this thing where it's like, oh yeah, cis people, this is how stupid you look when saying this to your cis child, or this to a trans child. They basically reverse the roles. But I found this comic where she does the exact thing she's criticizing. A couple comics, actually. Let me just change them up so you can see what I mean. We went to the Black Moms with Black Kids meeting, as Myrick calls it. Myrick says he doesn't like it because it's mostly black kids saying black kids stuff and he feels unwelcomed. I'm trying to change that. And that's why the violence towards white people is structural. Fuck off we're full. White power. But he's very impressed at how effective my teaching seems to be. He might show up next time to see the kids progress. Also, can I just mention real fast how much the tagline of this webcomic just pisses me off? It's been removed, so I don't think the author still goes with this extended title, but it's The Incredible Adventures of Steffi Who Happens to be Trans. Oh, <sighs> I can understand that maybe Incredible Adventures was a joke because nothing ever happens in this comic that can be classified as an adventure, but Who Happens to be Trans was a kick to the gender-neutral crotchular region, whichever you may be, because it literally all this comic talks about is that she's trans. You lose the ability to say, yeah, you can't categorize my character's personality as trans because she's so much else, when literally, actually, I, I don't like saying literally so much, but literally the entire comic is about the fact that she's trans. Oh my god, it makes me so mad. <sighs> my personal favorite character of my very openly LGBT comic is trans. They're non-binary, so you think I talk about it often, right? Since it's less common than binary trans characters, it doesn't come up often at all. So far, I don't even know what I'm going to point it out to talk about. They're very openly non-binary and are referred to as they, them, and correct people when they get it wrong, but if anything, I should be the one with the ability to refer to my book as The Incredible Adventures of Corsicana the Mantis Shrimp, who also happens to be trans, because they both actually do something, anything, besides just sitting there talking to their strawman, and also happens to be trans. As a disclaimer, I don't think all trans characters should keep their transness hidden and not have it come up a whole bunch in the story, but having some characters that do that help normalize it more without making people feel like it's being rubbed in their face, which is a common thing I hear from people who just don't want to hear about it. So a more subtle approach could be good in easing them into it. A lot of media actually does this well nowadays. I just watched that new Rocco's Modern Life special a while ago, and I thought Rachel Bighead's story was done great. It got resolved really fast, sure, but the movie was only 45 minutes and it wasn't the main plot. It just tied into the overarching theme of change, and I thought it was great. So if more things did that, I would be okay with this, yeah. A good way to improve this comic would be to age up the characters. My computer is freezing. Come on. Okay. Stop showing every character as fully transitioned at an early age or even know what they are entirely. There's a couple characters that question themselves, but it only ever lasts a page or two. That's not realistic at all. I also think talking down to your audience saying all people who don't like your comic are white cishet males and especially stop straw manning as much as she does. Those are all things that could be changed. No, I don't mean could, I mean should. Like, should actually be changed. 
and making more realistic scenarios for transphobia in day-to-day -day life would help people understand your plight better. There's one where there's just a dude in a car that pulls up to say, are you a boy or a girl? And as non-binary positive as a strip is trying to be, if somebody who didn't understand my identity saw this, I could easily see them thinking of some sort of maniac that's going to shove charts and gender studies college course words in their face just for being curious. As if someone would just pull over to ask me what I was. I haven't even had this happen in real life. I never leave my room, my dungeon 50 feet below the ground, but the few times I do go out to either kidnap company to bring down here or food for myself. Oh god, it's not funny at all. Instead of having Steffi, the main character, just turn to the camera and say something either needlessly complicated about the patriarchy, have it fit into the actual story more and have it directed at the person who said it originally, without them admitting defeat right away or turning out to be closeted themselves. I used to hate and not understand LGBT people because I was closeted and lived in a family who also said things like that, but the other 99% of the time, whoever's talking trash about you isn't going to suddenly come around just like that. It doesn't work like that. It takes years. Some topics I feel like she's too afraid to cover are the dangers of puberty blockers, the fact that trans male bottom surgery is currently horrendous and barely works as intended, and people who end up mistaking their identity altogether and turn out to be cis. And that it's okay to do experimentation like that, and it doesn't make you a trans trender or whatever the word for that is. She doesn't need to stop talking about LGBT issues. That's the whole goddamn point of the comic, but mm, it could be done better. All in all, would I recommend this comic? No! Oh, no! Oh my god, absolutely not. Don't read it. It's not even so bad it's good. It's just bad. My brain was melting after reading most of these strips in a single night just to make the script. I will say that I do feel bad about covering this topic because from what I've been told by someone I know who actually follows her, she's been doxxed, has had more death threats than most people on the internet, and I think she's been threatened in person before. She also has a subreddit that just posts her comics and turns them into even worse dumpster fires, like this. Ways to be a lesbian. Don't have a dick. Don't have a dick. Don't have a dick. Don't have a dick. PSA, if you have a dick you're not a lesbian. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! And it's not funny whatsoever. I, I guess it could be to someone, but... Uh, some of them are actually really funny, but for the most part, they're just really... Ugh. You can tell why the people writing these don't like the comics, basically. And one of the reasons I didn't actually watch any of the YouTube videos on this particular comic is because they're really really unapologetically horrible to LGBT people for the most part. I can be patient with people for disagreeing with me, but calling an 11 year old character a dick girl a trap, talking about homosexuality is a sin that ruins your life comparably to drugs, and using the comic as an excuse to bash people is honestly really scummy. And I don't say that because I'm like super, I'm like a leftist cuck or whatever. It doesn't have to be just LGBT stuff, it could be any subject. It's still really scummy to do, to just bash the people directly and make fun of them instead of actually talking about what makes the comic so bad. There's so many things that those reviewers could have mentioned from a technical standpoint and just how incorrect so much of this is, but no, they didn't do it. Quick update, I just found a bunch of Facebook comments by Sophie and uh... <laughs> I started training to look like those cool trans guys we see on the internet. I started self-defense classes so that I don't end up like the trans women we see on the news. Too bad you're not a trans guy, huh? Huh? What the fuck is this piece of shit? Okay, maybe I don't feel that bad for her, never mind. <coughs> Very obvious internalized hatred of men. <laughs> Vig Ventures! Wait, Vig... Adventure? Vig Ventures! 
The next one I'm going to talk about is a lesser known evil. It's called Vig Ventures and it was made by Priya Kishna. There's no real infamousness with this comic that I can think of just due to the fact I don't think I've ever seen anyone actually talk about this. The only way I found this webcomic was from an outdated forum thread I don't even think is available anymore. Every single comic is the same. It's kind of insane, honestly. Every single strip of this entire comic can be boiled down to this formula. Stupid idiot says something stupid. Sometimes it actually makes sense, but is worded in the stupidest way possible to make them look bad. Vegan says something smart as a comeback. Stupid person says something else, and then vegan kills stupid person or says something that makes them shut up. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, I just, I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Like, I'm not even kidding. That's really fucking disgusting. Hang on. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, maybe I'm not reading the right ones, but I feel like I was going insane looking at them and just seeing the same thing over and over. The straw manning is also insane in this comic. It's on every single page, nearly. Nearly. Sometimes they'll try to guilt trip you with like a cute animal with a knife stuck in it, or the main beauteous vegan woman character being all sad like, mm, I wish more people were vegan. Other than that, whenever there's a second character, you can guarantee it's going to be somebody who isn't vegan, who's portrayed as just an evil monster. Look, I love animals, okay? But I also pay people to kill animals so I can eat their corpses. If this is your definition of love, I'm sure the animals wish that you didn't love them. You vegan heads are just selfish. Why do you care so much about animals but not about humans? I care about both, actually. Why do you care more about the taste of animal products than about the very lives of animals and the well-being of the earth? Because I'm a selfish prick. Mmm, bacon. Sometimes, when I hear people talk. Who cares animals are exploited and killed? I love the taste of bacon. It reminds me of why I love animals more. What they say. Meat is essential for human health. What they mean. Derp. My knowledge of human nutrition is extremely poor. Your vegan friends think that I'm cruel to animals just because I send them off to slaughter for money and rip babies away from their mothers to kill them for more money and to steal the breast milk their moms made for them. Nonsense. I treat my animals like family. Ah. What are you doing? Giving you a hand with your family. I didn't read much into this one because most of them are unavailable to read unless you pay for them, but from what I did read, it's just page after page of this formula. Unlike Sophie LaBelle, Priya doesn't seem to be self-aware at all when it comes to how ridiculous her comic is. It's like she gets sucked into her own pocket dimension, and the only way she can communicate with the outside world is via these insane vegan comics where all on the more up and say, I hate animals because bacon tastes too good and I have to eat them all. As for the art itself, while Sophie's drawings are at least never copy-pasted from what I can tell, this fucking shites, I swear it's all doll maker stuff and MMD screenshots. If you're not from DeviantArt, you might not know what I'm talking about, but basically they just make their characters in this character making program that you find on like, uh, like dress up pregnant Elsa foot doctor flash game sites and just slightly change the expressions within the panels. I'll even overlay all the panels on top of each other, and you can see what I mean. Are you- are you seeing this? Do you know how lazy this is? As someone who redraws every single frame of my comic with different angles, different characters, it- Oh my god. I- I get it. Making a comic is hard and the control C and control V buttons are right in front of you, but just don't be an Adam Ellis about it. You can't improve your art by being safe. You need to take risks. The main character design is pretty forgettable, and although I personally don't care for anime art styles, even putting that aside, I don't think she's well designed. I don't even know what her name is. I don't- I don't even know which fucking one she is. I'm just- I'm talking about the one I think is the main character who's like the- the pink one with the mushroom on her head. The one that makes me want to vomit out of my eye sockets, however that would work. Something that frustrates me is how the actual product description is the author patting herself on the back for how good her art is, even if the majority of it is either traced, made with a doll making program, or just copy-pasted. 
I can't show in this video for obvious reasons, but Priya also uses completely unrelated images to the topic she's talking about. You know, back in the day, PETA had those flash games that had shock value pictures of real animal gore in between all the cutesiness of the game? She puts them in her comics as well, but includes pictures of roadkill, animals killed by other animals, and stillborn fetal animals saying that they're killed for food. Yeah, sure thing. When I'm comparing you to one of my least favorite groups on the entire planet, you know you're doing something wrong. She also literally compares people who eat meat to Hitler and disguises it as her straw man saying it first. Yeah, no, you were the one who started this sweaty, especially with one of her book covers just being a bunch of animals headed into a concentration camp. You know, from the fact she brings up Nazism so much. Hmm, you might think there's something deeper going on, but I just, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm gonna bring this comic back later. Just to show you a little about what I mean when I say something a bit extreme relating to it in a bit. Also, shout out to this panel that uses being gay as an insult like we're in 2009. How progressive. You can definitely tell that she loves both humans and animals. It's been updated due to backlash, but I can honestly tell she only fixed it because she was losing readers, not because she actually cares about what she did and how people thought it was wrong. I'm someone who, if I saw this in passing, I wouldn't really get upset about it. I kind of side-eye it, like, ugh. But I wouldn't get mad. However, she does not get a pass on this one because I'm being critical right now, and every small thing I see that can be interpreted as something awful, I'm going to talk about it. The thing that cracks me up the most about this is even with how much she pushes her message about how she's holier than thou for being vegan, she probably squishes spiders she sees on her wall and uses insect products all the time without knowing it. I see an absurd amount of people in general that don't even realize bugs are animals in the first place. They think they're somehow different, so they don't raise a brow when they're killed off en masse because they're munching on your quinoa. I mean, I could go on. She also probably doesn't care about the fact that child labor goes into picking her kale, the fact that countries are losing staple crops and money because vegan foods are in such high demands, vegans themselves are lacking vitamin D and B12 a lot of the time due to the fact it's not found in anything that grows in the ground, palm oil used in many vegan substitutes contributes heavily to deforestation and the killing of species like the orangutan. It's confusing to not eat honey if you're vegan because you're harming both bees and the environment by not supporting local beekeepers who keep the populations up. Blah 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 blah, you get it, whatever. I just, I like animals, okay? This video isn't meant to be a platform for me to bash vegans, but it's just too easy to debunk everything this particular artist says, especially when even she brings up good counterpoints in her own comics and ruins her credibility by making her self-insert saying, You're just an asshole for not being vegan, Desu! Dear vegans, if you care so much about animals, then why do you eat eggs? Gotcha. Vegans don't consume the product of a bird's menstruation cycle, silly. Oh, okay, then why do you use honey and milk? Those kill animals too, hypocrite. We don't consume bee vomit, nor the breast milk of another species. Oh, but you probably use makeup that's tested on animals, wear leather shoes and sleep on down pillows. And did you know that common is actually bug blood and gelatin is made of bones? If so, then why do you vegans use it? Hypocrite. Hypocrite. For fuck's sake. Can't you at least do some research before you open your mouth? She doesn't care about animals. She just cares about using them for emotional manipulation with those shock images I talked about earlier. Obviously, very obviously, not all vegans are this way. They get a bad rap. Some people just choose to eat vegan for health reasons. I myself am almost completely pescatarian just because red meat makes me sick. I don't like how chicken tastes. And other meats are just rarely brought into the house in general. I don't even really eat fish or shellfish as often as I could because I keep them as pets and I find it kind of weird for me personally to eat the same species as my pets. So essentially what I'm saying is, I don't have a problem with vegans, I have a problem with vegans that are only vegan for self-righteous reasons, refuse to believe that it does actually help contribute to the environment being harmed. I know I'm not supposed to be bashing the actual artists themselves, but I just found an entire archive of nothing but the stupid shit she's done over the years, and if you feel like checking it out, here's a link. Comparing people to Hitler and using gay as a way to demean people is apparently not the full extent of her questionableness. And about the preachiness, this is propaganda. This is the definition of propaganda. That comic I mentioned earlier, here is an edited version to show you the definition of propaganda itself and all the checks that it has on the list. No way my comic is propaganda. Yes way. 
I'm propaganda as well. The term is used heavily by people referring to war propaganda from almost a century ago but it's still prevalent today, just in a less obvious way. Bandwagon creates a follow the herd mentality by showing the group centered around the propaganda is the best group to be in. Card stacking deliberately leaves out negative information about the group to downplay things people wouldn't like about it. Glittering generalities is similar to card stacking, using emotional appeal to hide negativity and empty phrases to sound positive but mean nothing. Name calling, this one is obvious. Used to create a bad name for the opposing group to garner more attention for their own. Transfer associates certain qualities towards certain groups, negative towards opposing groups and positive for their own. It surpasses Sophie LaBelle's preachiness and goes straight into the deep end. It's it's insane. I am watching the ramblings of somebody going slowly insane thinking that they're the second coming of Christ for being vegan. <laughs> Funny thing, in my town there's actually this billboard kind of by the Asian market I shop at and it says WWJD what would Jesus do and then it says hashtag go vegan because apparently people just forget that he also ate meat and also he summoned a bunch of fish for his disciples to eat so yeah fish aren't animals fish don't have any feelings it's like that Nirvana song it's so Oh, this is why I'm writing my book about fish and bugs and stuff. <sighs> this one makes me mad. I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's too far gone to honestly be improved, but changing up the structure could work wonders. Talk about how vegan diets aren't for everyone and how people who can't go vegan can still help the environment, like buying locally, boycotting brands you know are cruel to animals, introducing more non-animal products slowly into their diet instead of overwhelming them, and adopting animals from shelters instead of buying them. Just do fucking anything besides call people Nazis for disagreeing with you when you're the one with years worth of history of hate towards other human beings. Would I recommend it? Sort of, if only for the absolute insanity of the author. It'd be great for a drinking game or reading with friends, just don't give her any of your money. She's already made enough off stealing people's art and reselling it. Every time we talk, I feel like it's the same thing. Yo, is this about the book thing again? I already told you, if I do everything as trans because I am trans, might as well discuss trans issues. And I get that. But we're 11. When are we supposed to be kids? What do you mean? We're kids right now. Not really. We're not playing video games, not drawing, not talking about school, not playing and I don't think I smiled once all night. Come on, Stuffy. Let's just play Mario or something. Being trans is an author is to life. Then what was the point of me reading all those gender studies books? Arguing with all those people online? Someone needs to educate the world. If it were up to me, I'd be carefree but all these transphobes, these so-called allies push me too. But it is up to you. Your whole life you could have been having fun and enjoying being a kid but you chose not to. I get it. People attack us for our identities and that'll never be okay but it's not your responsibility to solve the problem by yourself. You can't do it on your own, no one can. That's why we work together to help divide the weight. But you never let yourself just be a kid. You carry the weight on your own. You gave yourself up entirely to your cause, but Stuffy, was it worth it? I... I don't know anymore, Xiao.